And that had us all thinking about Mr. Rogers. Uh, Mr. Rogers was, was famous for having uh, always said, look for the helpers. Look for the helpers. Where are the helpers? And, uh, and I think that that's such a wonderful and beautiful thing. And so we want to ask you, where are the helpers in your life? Who are you helping? What is one of the kindest things that someone has ever done for you? Or, or what is one of the kindest things you have ever done for someone? Pass that along. Share those things along. Be, feel free to comment in, in the comment section along the Facebook feed. And, and let us know those wonderful things that are going on. We hope you enjoy our worship service. This is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning and welcome to worship here at First United Methodist Church of downtown Bentonville. My name is Reverend J.J. Whitney and I want to welcome you to worship with us this morning. If this is your first time to join us, a special welcome to you. I hope that you'll fill out the Connect card that's pinned in our Facebook live feed, and we'll bring a special gift to you this week. It is our hope that through this service you may feel connected to our church family, that your heart might be encouraged, and that you might once again turn to wonder at the acts of an almighty God through Jesus Christ. A season of Advent is upon us, and we have many ways for you to celebrate the joy of the season with us here at our church. Next Sunday, we're going to prepare our sanctuary in a special service at 5 o'clock p.m. for the hanging of the green. So join us online. We're going to explain our chrismon tree. We're going to bless our Advent wreath and get ready for the season. We also invite you to join our churchwide devotion study on incarnation by Adam Hamilton. And there are ways for you to join us in the many studies that are offered during the Advent season in our church. We are going to have Holy Communion at the end of this service today, where we'll share in the bread and the juice together. We have communion kits that are available here in the church office, so contact us and we'll get those to you. As United Methodists, we believe that when we come to the communion table, Jesus is here. When we bless the body and the, and the blood, um, we celebrate that through the mystery of God's presence, that we welcome Jesus in our midst when we bless the elements here at the table. We also believe that all are welcome to receive, so you are definitely welcome to join us for communion today. Now let us join our hearts together as we join in the call to worship. We come before God as equal in God's sight. God knows us thoroughly and loves us completely. None of us is perfect and without blemish. Yet God has called us God's children and asked us to be compassionate and responsible in our caring and witness. We are called to joyful obedience in God's realm. Thanks be to God who trusts us and pours God's abundant love on us. Amen. Join us in our hymn this morning, How Shall I Come Before the Lord? How shall I come?
Our scripture this morning is Mark 10, 35 through 45, the request of James and John. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink? or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, we are able. Then Jesus said to them, the cup that I drink, you will drink, and with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, you know that among the Gentiles, Those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I want to add my welcome to Reverend JJ on this morning. So glad to be with you on this morning and to have you um, and your comments in the comment section already. I have a question for you. If you had one question to ask Jesus right now, what would it be? If you can ask Jesus one question, what would it be? I'm giving you the opportunity to ponder and to also add those in a comment section. Let us pray. Oh, Holy Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to hear your word. And we ask in this very moment that you move the distractions from us right now, the text messages, the browsing on our internets, to be present in this very moment, to fill your Holy Spirit, and to be transformed and made anew on today. Is this we ask in Jesus Amen. We just heard the scripture read for our hearing, and it's familiar. We've heard this plenty and plenty of times, and but what I invite you to do is Mark, the narrator for this gospel, is inviting us to journey with him. It is a, it is a fast-moving plot, but it's one that invites us in, as peering in to, to, to see and to hear Jesus talking and doing his miracles and such, but also give the opportunity to hear the irony that's going on between the disciples and their inability to get it right, but also invites us to see and to think about what Jesus is offering us on today. So I invite you to journey with me on this morning. And it's a journey uh, to, to Jerusalem. As we find ourselves in verses 32, right before we get to our scripture for today, they were on a road going up to Jerusalem, and Jesus was walking ahead of them. And they were amazed, and those who followed were afraid. He took the twelve aside again and began to tell them what was to happen. Now, this is the, this is the third and final time that Jesus gives the disciples an instruction. And they're walking to Jerusalem, and Jesus is like, come on, brothers, come on over here. One more time. Listen. And he tells them what is about, about to happen to him, and saying, see, we're going up over there to Jerusalem. We're going to Jerusalem, and, to, and the Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death, 
and then they will hand me over to the Gentiles. They're going to mock me. They're going to spit on me. They're going to kill me. And after three days, I will rise again. So they're huddled up around Jesus, and Jesus is telling them for the last time what's going to happen to him. And then James and John have a bright idea. They have this question, this insensitive, this selfish, selfish question, a request, rather, to Jesus. They had heard Jesus say what's going to happen to them, and they run up to Jesus and says, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever you ask. Woo! I mean, how insensitive could you be? You just heard the man say he's going to be killed, and you got a question? I mean, what's going on here, disciples? And this reminds me, just as much as we think we're walking close to Jesus and doing the work of the Lord, ourselves creep in. I, me, we creep in. And we worry about ourselves in the wrong times. And, and, and Jesus says, oh God, what is it? What do you want from me? And they say to him, grant us to sit one at your right hand and one at your left in glory. Grant us to sit one at your right and one at your left in glory. And I can think about a lot of things I could ask Jesus in that moment, but that ain't it. <laughs> and I'm going to read your responses like the question you're asking Jesus, and maybe you find yourselves having your question rooted in yourselves. And that's what we are conditioned to do in our little United States of America. We're taught and we high to be all about me. We, you know, I was a teacher and we had a sense of, you do good, I'll give you a treat. It's all about you. We learn and come into the world. And we all want to think about ourselves here and there. And Jesus says, hold up now, now. You don't know what you're asking. You don't know what you're asking, James and John. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink? Or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? Are you able to drink of this cup? And are you able to be baptized in a baptism that I'm going to experience? And the immediacy of, of Mark is not allowing a lot of time for them to ponder this question. They say immediately, yes, we are able. And I can imagine just like the, the disciples throughout Mark, they don't get it right. And I know they don't understand exactly what they have asked and what they are saying we're able to do. But Jesus has the compassion and he has the patience. He didn't rebu rebuke them like he did Peter a little, far, little um, but, but before we got here in the scripture where he says, Satan, get behind me and all that stuff. But he has compassion in his last moment, disciples and his teaching. And he, Jesus, knowing all things, he predicts, yes, you'll be able to drink of this cup. And yes, you will be baptized in the same baptism that I am baptized with. And those hearing this particular moment, they would have already known the story. They're just hearing the history we told. And they are listening and they are thinking about them own selves. Came across this great, great article about, by... Um, Patrick Reardon. It's, a, it's an article um, entitled The Cross, Sacraments, and Martyrdom. And an investigation of Mark chapter 10, verses 35 through 45. And what he says here is that those who are listening to this particular word, this question that Jesus is asking them can you drink of this cup? And can you be baptized in the baptism that I am going to experience? This has been a teaching, this has been a catechism of the doctrines of the church. And those hearing in this particular question have been, like he said, I'm a silver from him, it was great. He says, I'm going to stop and consider. Stop and consider that which you are about to experience. And those in this time has believed that it's a persecution going on and they are pre preparing to be initiated into the faith through baptism. And after that baptism to take of the Lord's cup. 
the Eucharist. And the question is, when all this persecution is going on, the question for them is, do you know what you're getting yourself into? Can you drink of this cup? And are you willing to take on everything that, that comes with this cup and this baptism? Because Jesus knew what is going for him. This, this represents the passion and the death, the suffering. And we see on, if we read on into Mark, where Jesus is, is in Gethsemane and he's praying to Jesus, praying to God to take away the cup. This cup of wrath and suffering and death. Do you know what you're asking for? And so they go on and say yes to the question. And Jesus says, you will. And they will. But they don't know it just yet. After the story goes on, James and John go on to to be great disciples and great founders of the church. But at this very moment, they don't know what they're asking for. And Jesus did not grant their request, what he says is, that's not mine to grant you, but it's for those for whom it has been prepared. And Jesus goes on, to, and what's happening now is the other disciples are hearing James and John thinking about themselves, and they get angry because they too were early on in chapter 9 asking about the same thing, who's going to be greatest, the greatest. And Jesus says, those who want to be first must be last. Those who want to be first must be last. And Jesus goes on and tells them that the ways in which you are asking about greatness, this is the very thing that I'm coming to to turn upside down because in the kingdom of God, those who are powerful are no longer powerful. It is the the lost and the, the ones that are forgotten about who are first. The lowly that are raised up, the, the lowly that Jesus cares about, and he's reminding the disciples, if you're going to follow me, if you're going to take this cup and drink it, if you're going to be baptized in this baptism, that you must let that go. It's beyond you. It's beyond me. And Jesus is reminding them to, to, to reorder their thinking, to, to tap into the power of the lowly servant. And Jesus says, but it's not so among you, but whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be the slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to serve, to be served, but to serve and to give his life for a ransom for many. And I can imagine the disciples hearing this, they was like, oh God, I had to give, give this up? You know, we all want to be great. Do y'all want to be great? I do. I mean, great. We we want to be the best. You know why I know we want to be the best? You know, the self-industry, help industry, the self-help industry is a billion-dollar industry. We want to be the biggest and the baddest. We want to, to have all these accolades. We want to do all these different things. But Jesus is reminding us that if you take a moment and think about what you're asking, and think about every time we come to this, this table and drink of this cup and to, to partake of this bread, what it really is. It's not, it is a gift. It's a gift of God's grace for us to partake of the bread and body of Jesus Christ, but it comes with a cost. It comes with a cost to remember all that Jesus has done, and that is also his life that he walked and taught them about what it means to love God and what it means to love neighbor, what it means to preach the gospel, to repent because the kingdom of God is near. It is to to, to follow Jesus is to to give up self. Like he told the young rich ruler, you have all these things, but one thing, give up your riches. To follow Jesus is costly. It causes us to pause every time that we come to God's table, to Christ's table. It's not a cookie-cutter path to discipleship. It's one that causes us to stop and ponder. Can you stop and ponder about where Jesus is calling you on this morning? 
And it may just begin a small little prayer, Lord, in this moment, I hear you speaking to me. I want to drink of this cup, and I want to be baptized in the baptism that you have been baptized in. And thanks be to God, all that has already been done, because just like the, the hearers of this word, they already knew the story. And they knew when they came to, to be inducted into their faith, be initiated into faith, they already asked the question. They knew what was at stake. Death was at their footsteps. It was at their door. And I, be, I began to think about today about how many people just gave their lives up for this good news. It must be good. Because Jesus Christ did not give up that cup that he asked God to give from him. He said, you know what, I'm going to go to the, the point of being a hum, humble servant, to the point of death, to be obedient to the, the will of God the Father. And the disciples that, that walked this path too, even though they deserted Jesus at the moment of betrayal, they came back. And they rest their lives too. This what is this gospel? What is this cup? What is this baptism that people want to give their lives up for? And we got it good. We don't know how good we have it, but the question for us is still the same. Stop and ponder and consider what it is to partake of this great meal. Because Jesus reminds us to partake of this meal, so follow him all the way to Jerusalem to leave ourselves back here and to, to walk into new life because when we drink of this cup, we're reminded of new life. Because when Jesus Christ died, we died with him. And we, were, we rose up as new beings and new creatures in Jesus Christ. And as Peter has taught us, he says that through the divine power, we have been given all that we need in this life. So we have it. It's a gift the Holy Spirit empowers us every time we drink this cup to be nourished, to remind us to go out in the world, to, to love our neighbor, to serve our neighbor. What would it look like if we woke up texting each other versus texting about the political climate we're in, about how can I serve you? This is a moment that we are to stop and cease. And there are many ways in which you could participate in serving in the life of our church. I invite you after the end of our worship to go to our website, our church website, funcbentonville.org. And there is a beautiful Christmas Advent journey of all the offerings we have here that Maribor our Communications has put together for us. It's beautiful. Go look at it. There are ways in which you can serve our neighbor to serve through the, the Second Street Pantry, to serve through buying gift cards for Project Zero, children that do not have parents, to give them some, a glimpse of the love of God in their lives through this Christmas season. We have a community partner through R.E. Baker right across the street from our church. We're collecting food and clothing for our neighbors. Stop and cease. Taste and see what the Lord has given us is good and is good for our soul and is to nourish us to be Christ in the world. More than ever, the world needs to know that Christ still reigns and it is demonstrated how we are serving our neighbor, how we are reordering the power of to, to be, the, all the things that have been put in place in our lives that, that we implicitly take part of these power structures that are causing people to suffer. So out of your abundance, who can you serve? Out of your commitment to remembering and participating in this great meal, to know that we're nourished, we don't have to do it on our own, just wake up and say, Grace, good morning. Stop and ponder as we come to this great table about the mercies and grace that God has done for us. Jesus gave his life for us. Jesus is asking us to give up ourselves today. Let us make that commitment. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Christ has broken down the wall. Christ has broken down the wall. Let us join our hearts as one. Christ has broken down the wall. Here except response to the word that we have been given, let us affirm our faith together as found in the historic Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us go to God in prayer. Gracious God, through Jesus Christ, we expect that you will do what we want, whatever we ask. We want places of honor and all the glory. We want to be great. We want to be first. But you, O oh Christ, are servant of all. And so we ask that you forgive our brazenness and our self-importance. Forgive us. Teach us to be humble. Teach us to be more like Jesus Christ. Oh God, be present among us for the sake of all human beings on earth. As this pandemic continues to take hold, give us strength to be good neighbors, to practice safety, and to care for each other. Give your mighty strength to those in the medical professions as they face incredible fatigue and weariness. We uplift the very sick, those who cannot have their families close in their hour of need. We pray for those who are testing vaccines and those who are willing to be part of the tests. Empower us by your Holy Spirit, O oh God, that we might be those who embody your compassion. A long journey is ahead. And we give you thanks that we have this church family and we have you. We pray for those who've been caught in the aftermath of the hurricanes who not only face a rising pandemic, but are displaced from their homes. We ask for help to come in this hour of need. We lift, to, we lift to you those in our church family who have undergone surgery and who are now in the healing process. 
We pray for Fleeta, for Tom, and for Tim, and for others who need rest and the wholeness that only you can provide. Oh God, you are the source of our comfort, and so we pray to you for the lonely and the sick and for the sad. Be with those who are grieving, those who are covered by the darkness of anxiety and depression. We claim for them the gift of your peace, that their troubled hearts may be set at rest and all fears banished. We pray these things in the name of the one who knows our fears and who showed us how to love fiercely, Jesus the Christ. Amen. I'm going to give you opportunity to respond to the Word of God. Ways you can do that is by um, thinking about how you can serve this week. And like I said, you can go to our website. Um, there's plenty of opportunities for you to do there, and also check our Facebook during the week. We'd love to see you serve in record numbers this holiday season and thinking about what it means to come to this table of Jesus Christ, to be in the game, to participate in where God is calling us on today. Another way you can do that is by giving your tithes and your offering, and the ways you can give are listed before you.
Let us pray. Oh, holy God, we thank you for this opportunity to give out of our abundance, freely to think about how we can serve in your world. We pray for those that are, have given your tithes and our offering. We may be blessed to bless your kingdom here on earth. In Christ we pray. Amen. It's time in worship. We're going to give you an opportunity to go ahead and grab your communion kits. I want to thank you again for worshiping with us on this morning. It was great to have you. Um, so go ahead and grab your communion kits, and we're going to come to Christ's table on this morning. Christ our Lord invites us to his table, all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. And we turned away, our love fell, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through the prophets, and so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointing him to preach the good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, and recovering of the sight to the blind, to set at liberty of those who were oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when your people, you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with the sinners. By the baptism of his suffering and death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. Deliver us from the slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always and the power of your word and the Holy Spirit. On a night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread he gave thanks to you, and he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, This is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink for this, all of you, for the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of of me. And so the members of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ 
that we, that we may be for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all of the world. Until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our sins, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you and I. The cup of salvation. Let us stop and consider as we eat the body and blood of Christ. Let us take and eat together. Let us pray. Oh God, we're thankful for this great reminder of what it, what it means to follow you, to give up the things that are causing us to think about ourselves, to move beyond ourselves. And to follow you means to serve others as you have served us, O oh Lord. Let us be reminded in this meal that you have nourished us go out to be the body in Christ in the world so the world can know how to love and that you indeed have risen in victory. In Christ we pray. Amen. See you back next week.